Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Wong and I'm with the marketing team at Veritone. And today we'd like to welcome you to the Broadcasting, Engineering and Information Technology Speaker Series here during the NAB Express Show. Joining me is Ryan Stilberg, President and Co-Founder of Veritone to present his paper submission, The Podcast Promise, Topic Extraction for Money and Monetization and Brand Targeting. As you may know, Podcasts, podcasts are exploding not only in volume, but also in the variety of the content. With so much content geared to diverse audiences, podcast producers are starting to realize the staggering potential for monetization. Likewise, advertisers are looking to this untapped medium for reaching and engaging new audiences. Today, we're going to describe how new AI-based technologies are greatly improving the way for brands to connect to their core audiences and immediately experience an uplift in engagement and revenues. In addition, we'll explore how AI platforms are enabling content owners to monetize any type of content, even programs that appeal to super niche audiences. Ryan, before we begin to talk about topic extraction for monetization and brand targeting, could you please tell us who Veritone is and how we play in the artificial intelligence space? Thank you, Daniel. Um, it's great to be speaking with you guys today. I wish I could be on stage in Las Vegas, uh, but um, right now I'm in my kitchen, and so I hope you can hear me clearly, and, and, but I do look forward to walking you through um, everything we're doing at Veritone and specifically how we're applying a lot of this technology to the podcast industry. Um, Veritone, we're a several-year-old company founded in 2014, um, and we really set out to build one of the most advanced and broadest um, AI technology companies um, that, that's ever been created. And, and we, I think we've been pretty successful in building up this company of uh, building some really powerful, innovative AI-based solutions and technologies that today we license to over about 2,000 media and entertainment companies um, and, uh, and over 150 government legal and compliance companies. So we've um, pretty, pretty much become ubiquitous in, in sort of what we've been building in terms of AI and machine learning. Um, take it a little step further, um, if we got to, you want to move to um, maybe the next slide, um, and we can you know, talk right in about how some, you know, some of this um, technology works in the background, is before I jump right into podcasting, the area we all know and hear about different forms of technologies of AI or different applications. There's chatbots, um, there's predictive-based modeling, and other forms. The area that I'm going to talk about today that Veritone is very strong at is in the cognitive categories, right? So in effect, think of what humans historically have been able to do with, with great aptitude, albeit with limited capacity. Veritone and, and our, our technologies have been thriving and providing some really amazing breakthroughs um, for companies, right, to, to in effect augment what their human effort has been historically, but allow them to greatly increase their capacity. So for media and entertainment, what I mean by that is there's so much content out there Right? Podcast is just, I'll say, one drop in the bucket of all of it. But the amount of video that's produced every single day, not just by the professional production companies, but by you and I as individuals, it's incredible. There's billions and billions of hours of content created every single day. And it's, and it's, it's, and it's, and it's always increasing. As storage gets cheaper, right? as compute gets cheaper and more efficient, you're seeing, you know, in, in back in the day when you were producing a movie, you literally would, would film... Um, for a, a period of time, and one of your limiting factors and governors was how much film did you have? Today, they just leave it running. It's estimated that they're actually, for a single two and a half hour movie that today, they're producing over a hundred times more content than they did just 20 years ago. So, when you see all this huge amount of, of content, which most of it is unstructured, meaning you don't know exactly what is in every single frame of video or every single second of audio, how do you possibly organize this? How do you get the most value? How do you generate the most revenue when you have that much tonnage of unstructured content? So, Veritone AIware, and we name AIware as the name of our um, AI technology stack, um, is very, very good at doing number one, high speed, high fidelity ingestion of content. So we can, we're very good at getting both large and small files um, they could be live streams, linear streams from ESPN or other broadcasters, or large, um, I say, archive-based um, data assets like movies, um, and podcasting, and, and I'll say digital native opportunities. So Veritone starts with ingestion, right? And as you many of you know, 
um, all the, the content is in so many different formats. So right, having the right ability to ingest with the right adapters to ingest all this content to then start acting upon really is step one. Um, step two, which starts to get a little bit more exciting is what AI are we gonna bring to that, right? How am I gonna deploy which you know, proprietary um, and, and, and or very specialized AI models am I gonna apply against that content as I'm ingesting it to produce really, really valuable metadata? So for example, some of the, the, the common ones that you all hear of, and absolutely we, we build and deploy and license these technologies to our media and entertainment customers, are natural language processing. Number first and foremost, right, you know, which is automated transcription. Taking that audio file, right, whether it's audio from a video or audio from a, you know, an audio program like a podcast, and as that's being ingested, creating a very accurate transcript uh, against that audio, uh, audio file, and more importantly, time correlating it exactly back to the media itself, right, down to the, down to the specific words. Very, very important. Um, NLP is definitely one of our more ubiquitous categories of cognition. We support many different languages, um, different dialects, and um, it's something that we that we we you know we, I think we process over about 15 million hours a year of content um, with just NLP alone. So it's a big, it's a very very big, big and important category across the board. Um, in addition to that, and I'm not going to go into too much detail in the other classes, considering this is a podcasting um, show, is facial recognition object recognition um, and analysis, OCR, optical character recognition. Um, so when you think of that, when I, when I talked earlier about AI, is if we're in the cognitive class, humans can sit there, obviously, and watch frame by frame all this content. They can listen to all this audio content and create their own logs, if you will, or metadata logs, but it's incredibly expensive, time consuming, and candidly, it's not even a remotely a possibility anymore because of what we talked about earlier is the sheer amount of content that's out there from all these millions of different sources. So step one is being fast, reliable to get content into our ecosystem. Step two is building the right or applying the right AI models, right? Transcription, face detection against that content. And then the output of that is highly indexed, highly accurate metadata. And then that's really where we start to make value of this is, okay, great, Ryan, what's next, right? I have this output of metadata. I, I've, I've had used machine learning and AI to organize all this content. Now, I, I, how do I turn that into value? Um, so a building, uh, and, and this goes back to how we architected AIware, uh, the ability to quickly build applications and workflows to, right, to take advantage of that accurate metadata that we just created is critical. And, and in, within the ecosystem of AIware, we also have technologies that empower our customers with low code opportunities to provision and build out these workflows and ultimately turning that into a solution that is either hopefully going to generate them more revenue, save, you know, in, you know, increase operational efficiency, or third, candidly, just help augment the human element that they've already made an investment in. So ingestion, um, applying AI to it to index it, um, and, and, and create highly accurate metadata. Third component is a, the, the workflow or the application development. And then, and then, and that's ultimately what our end customers, the majority of our end customers are, are, are really downstream now, able to use those applications, those workflows to improve their business. Um, so with that, I'm gonna shift over and apply what I just discussed and, and, and talk specifically about podcasting. Okay. So, so back to the example, the, 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 the content that we're ingesting and analyzing are podcasts. And as we all know from some of the stats floating around, podcasting has exploded. Daniel talked about some of this in the beginning of the show. And let's just say that for you know, easy numbers, there's a million unique podcasts out there, right? And every week, thousands and thousands of, of both amateur and professional podcasts are, be, are being produced. We, we today are ingesting thousands and thousands daily podcast shows. Um, and as we're ingesting all those, you know, those um, discrete and, and both independent and, or part of a series podcast, we then apply um, transcription NLP against that to create a highly accurate transcript of every single word that they're saying. We could even go so far as apply speaker separation to it. So if it's a podcast, um, such as you know, Daniel and I are, let's say, turning this into a podcast, without having to you know, focus initially on what channel we're speaking through, we can actually break apart our voices as well, 
right? So there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with AI just with, with pure audio. So as we've ingested all those podcasting and we've created now that highly accurate time correlated transcript against each podcast, we then can add a whole nother layer of cognition against it, which we, which we collectively call entity extraction or topic extraction. So the transcript obviously says, you know, exactly verbatim of what you know, I'm trying to say, right? I, I'm explaining to you how our process in podcasting works, but what, what am I really talking about, right? What's the theme uh, of the overreaching podcast, right? Um, and we really call that top topic and ent entity extraction. It's a different class of cognition. It's different than transcription. So after we have the, the transcription, we then apply or run additional AI models against it to extract the topic and, and keywords from that content. Why is this so important? Um, if you podcasts can range from a few minutes long to some, as many people know, are a four hour show. They're just basically repurposing a broadcast program and, 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 and turning it into a podcast. Um, if you dive into those shows, if I say a Joe Rogan podcast, the entire show is not about sports, right? Joe Rogan happens to be, you know, really efficient in auto and, and, and focuses a lot on sports, but on an episode by episode basis, he'll go from politics to lifestyle to restaurants, right? It's what it makes it really engaging. It's important for our customers, um, whether that our customers actually, you know, the distributors of those podcasts or advertisers or others, they need to know not just what the overreaching show is, it's Joe Rogan. They need to know what is inside the content. And, and, and in relative to varying, varying aperture of time, but such as do I care, do I want to know every five minutes of a podcast what the topic, what are they, what's the theme and what are they talking about? Um, or do I say I want to you know, expand a little bit more and I want to know every 15 minutes really what the segments are about. So that variability, um, we're going to get back to that in a little bit, is, is, is very important depending on how our, a lot of our pro, uh, clients and partners want to monetize these podcasts. So let's now shift a little bit farther. I've, I've ingested all the podcasts now. I've run transcription against it to create a very um, tightly correlated and highly accurate transcript. We've then invoked topic and entity extraction AI uh, and, and applied that against the transcript. And the output now is, I really know what all these podcasts are about, right? And so if you now can imagine, you're starting to see a little glimpse of the value that we're gonna be able to unlock here is now I started with just basically a blob of thousands and thousands of podcasts and having very little in, in insight of what's inside it. Now all the way to they're all hyper indexed, all time correlated. And not only do I have the transcript, but I know what actually they're really talking about, right? Um, lifestyle. So once we've finished that step, then we're going to talk about a few different use cases. Uh, and I'll turn it back to Daniel and he'll kind of do some intros to, to the specific use cases. But you see here on the screen, um, just, you know, ad server and podcast stream. And I'll talk a little bit more about, great, I have a transcript. I turn it into entity and topic extraction. How do I use it for my business to, you know, to generate, you know, uh, more revenue for my, my podcast enterprise? Yeah, thanks, Ryan. That's a great overview of how AIware automatically transcribes and tags audio streams and then provide topical and descriptive metadata prior to publishing. So obviously there, we only have a couple of minutes left, unfortunately, with our podcast here, but we definitely wanna share with you some four key main use cases uh, that you see with um, topic extraction here. And the first one here is um, ad targeting. Ryan, tell us a little bit quickly about how ad targeting works uh, with the uh, topic extraction here. Sure. You know, coming from a really an ad tech background, you know, I've been in the ad tech background for the, in the internet space since the early 90s. Um, and, and there's really two forms. In, in, in ad targeting, we can either target advertising against the individual. So I want to serve and target an ad to Daniel um, and, and really try to hyper focus there. Or I want to do a combination of targeting not just Daniel, but up against the context of the media, right? I want to associate my brand when they are having a conversation about the beach or the weather, right? So I'll say that can, that's contextual insight. Up until this point, we have not really had the opportunity to target the, con the context of a podcast with the exception of just, as I mentioned earlier, like the entire Joe Rogan show. I know it's Joe Rogan and potentially about sports. Now we can actually target these, advertising, these advertisements specifically to topics, not just within a single podcast, but across thousands of podcasts. So I can affect, build a network and saying, 
I'm a, you know, an, an air conditioning company, and when they're talking about how hot it is in the sweltering heat of this new heat wave, um, I want to I want to associate my advertising um, and, and when uh, across thousands of podcasting when they start talking about those events, those contextual triggers, so I can uh, uh, target my ads against that. The second side, which will kind of go, oh, sorry, Daniel. I was going to say, that's great. Uh, I was going to say, if you can talk about also the brand yeah. use yeah. case that, that comes along with that. And, and, and there's two sides to it, right? It's not all about targeting. It's also about protecting the brands, right? So depending on what type of product or service you have, you may be very clear that you don't want your brand associated with you know any certain topics or, or topic categories, tobacco, firearms, gambling, right? Those are some of the classics. But more importantly is if you feel that a topic is skewing too political in scope, right? And you want to keep your brand away from that, you can use the same contextual insight from topic extraction and entity extraction to help you protect your brand, meaning don't serve right against that. Or you can say, tell me more about these podcasts before I waste any money, right? I want to look at all the content of these podcasts as they're being produced. And I want to see, does it make sense? Is there a brand correlation? Is it safe for my brand to advertise on that? And that's another kind of a immediate opportunity um, that, that this technology is providing. Great. And the last two use cases we want to talk quickly is about is the enhanced CEO, I'm sorry, SEO of, of what it can do. Ryan, you want to talk a little bit about how it can better uh, give you a better search engine optimization with this? Yep. Well, we talked about 1 million podcasts out there, and that's a lot of content. So how are people going to find these podcasts, right? Um, the internet, you know, from its earliest days of HTML and the early, in, the, in the early iterations of HTML, created kind of a structured framework. Like it was like the early um, framework that by which all metadata tagging and sort of indexing and searching of websites was kind of built upon. When you look at audio and video content inside, really in particularly podcasts, there is no structure. So how can you search or expose my show to into the digital indice out there? How do I get higher indexing on Google search? One way of doing that is, and what they look at is, is not just, again, about the metadata, it's the Joe Rogan show about sports, but these engines and bots are very smart and they wanna know what's the content really about, right? And so we can help the, all of our clients expose this time correlated metadata in conjunction with the published audio, the podcast itself, which we've seen has generated significantly higher search and interest and, and discovery of these new podcasts, which hasn't been done before. So we're really excited about this uh, use case as well. And, and the last use case is obviously improved search and discovery. And, and there's a lot that leads kind of tangentially to that, like brand targeting for competitive intelligence. Talk a little bit more about that, Ryan. So discoverability, you know, it's, we live in a, a crazy world where we have some people who are interested in short, um, you know, I'm sorry, long form based content, but in the world of YouTube, right, and podcast, I mean, it's bite-sized world now at times. And so that just creates more strain. If you're a consumer, you're trying to find content or have content in a, in a stream-based world, like in my feed brought to me, right? It's critical that we can expose, like, and, and, and if I have the right information about the content, the right accurate metadata, it helps me find Daniel's interests, right? Because he's published a lot of his interests on, on social media and other platforms. By having, by us ability to be able to correlate those, um, and the ultimate goal is to put and try to express and expose um, and present the best, most desirable content it, to Daniel when he wants it. So improved discoverability is kind of very closely associated with SEO, um, but this is you know, really focused on the value to the end consumer. Um, and we've seen some great results right out of the gates with improved discoverability as well. Thanks, Ryan. You know, we're going to have to wrap it up here. But in summary, I want to thank you for your time and thank you for sharing how AI based cognitive processing techniques can automatically, again, transcribe and tag audio streams with uh, topical and descriptive metadata prior to, prior to publishing. Um, you know, is there any final words you'd like to leave for our audience today? Yep. I, I think just think of it as it's not just audio that we're talking about here, right? Podcasting. You know, it is in different derivatives of it. You're seeing you know, new launches of Quibi and other ones that are video based too. So we vi we envision this same level of indexing, the same creation of a contextual taxonomy for audio, but also video as well. 
and, and all those different dimensions of face and, and objects and scenes in the background too. So we're really excited about where this is going and, and we're excited to be an, an integral part of this new ecosystem. Well, great, Ryan. Again, thank